Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. It is Thanksgiving week, so happy Thanksgiving. I'm recording on Sunday, which I don't normally do, but it's been a little wonky, so my regular schedule is a little off kilter right now. But hey, that means it's the beginning of Thanksgiving week, and we are here to talk about not all things Thanksgiving. I don't have enough time for that, but uh, some things Thanksgiving. First off, let's touch on the fact that Thanksgiving, the history of Thanksgiving can be, not can be, is problematic, right? Uh, We have it based on this perceived image of the pilgrims and the Native Americans coming together for this feast, and that is what Thanksgiving is based off of. It turns out that that is not 100% historically accurate. Yes, there was a feast, a festival between the pilgrims and the surrounding native community. It's not exactly what we picture, what we portray it as, and it's certainly not the stereotypical Indians and pilgrims that, you know, we dress up our preschoolers as each year. Let's stop doing that. (laughs) So it's it's not that. I, I look to the source of this audible original that I talked about um, with the Halloween episode that I am loving. I listened to the Thanksgiving lecture. If you didn't listen to the Halloween episode, the uh, the lecture series that I'm referring to is The Hidden History of Fall- of Holidays, excuse me, by Hannah Harvey. It is, as I said, an audible original and it is a series of lectures on uh, holidays throughout the year. So I started with the Halloween lectures. I have listened to the Thanksgiving lectures, and then I'm just going to continue going through the lectures as holidays come up. I love this kind of stuff, and she does such a good job. I cannot recommend this listen enough, and I'm not promoting anything. I'm not being paid to promote anything. I'm not being asked to promote anything. I just really enjoy this series of lectures. At any rate, Thanksgiving. We tend to think of it as that quote-unquote first Thanksgiving. But the letter describing that incident, according to Hannah Harvey in The Hidden History of Holidays, wow, that's a lot of H's. Um, That letter describing that event was lost for 200 years, thereabouts. So what we really base our Thanksgiving traditions on is still, uh, in, in the New England area, it's still a harvest festival, but it is not that first supposed Thanksgiving as we have been taught for years. Thanksgiving was, um, they, it was attempted to make be made a holiday for years and years and years. It wasn't made a holiday until President Lincoln made it a holiday, and that was in connection with the Civil War and um, his, his feelings that there needed to be a day set aside for gratitude for thanks. But it really was based on more of a notion of a New England harvest festival. And then later, 200 years after the fact, <laughs> after the letter was written, um, the the letter describing this supposed first Thanksgiving was found, and that really took hold of um, the imagination of people, and that's where we now get our supposed thoughts of the tra- traditional Thanksgiving. Although, what's described in that is not anything like what we would think of as our traditional Thanksgiving. So, it really is more based on... Um, harvest festivals and those can occur anytime throughout the fall in fact if you think about it the end of november is not really a time for a harvest festival because what are we harvesting (laughs) unless you live in somewhere with a very temperate climate you're not harvesting really anything at this time of year a harvest festival would be 
much earlier in the fall. But I encourage you to listen to this lecture, uh, uh, The Hidden History of Holidays, again by Hannah Harvey, because it, it, she does such a good job of talking about where we get the images from, why it's problematic, why it, you know, that letter was lost for 200 years, and also talking about the woman who really pushed to make it into an official holiday, which, as I said, it wasn't until the 1860s. So let's talk a little bit about the woman who really did that that pushing. Her name was Sarah Josepha Hale, and she is, uh, this is from the, um, Oh, what website am I on? MPS.gov, so nationalparkservice.gov. It's talking about Lincoln's proclamation making the, it a national holiday. But Sarah Josepha Hale was known for her work as an editor of Godey's Ladies Book and um, as the author of Mary Had a Little Lamb. I forgot that part. Uh, Hannah Harvey does talk about that in her lecture. Uh, she played a very large role in, of course, making this into a national holiday, although it did not happen in her lifetime. Um, she, maybe maybe it did. Uh, it took her 36 years to uh, to complete the show. She may have been alive. I should not have said that. Uh, that was a large assumption on my part, but she started her campaign in 1827. She began uh, as the editor of Boston Ladies Magazine to write essays calling for a national holiday. Um, in 1846, the, she was then the editor of Godey's Lady Book. She launched a letter writing campaign to support that cause. And then finally, on September 28th, 1863, she wrote, oh, she wrote directly to President Lincoln. So she was not dead. I just assumed, and I apologize, that was wrong. Um, but she wrote directly to President Lincoln, asking him to create, use his powers to create that ho as a holiday. And that was when her quest was finally fulfilled. And then there's a, this is another really good website if you want to see some of the timeline. There's some timelines. There's um, uh, there's a picture of President Truman pardoning, pardoning a turkey. You can learn about why the heck presidents pardon turkeys every year. Oh, lucky turkeys, since we eat so very many of them <laughs> on the holiday. Unless you're a vegetarian or a vegan, in which case, awesome. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I find this stuff fascinating and... I am so glad that I found this series of lectures to learn about holidays because some of the stuff I know, but other things I did not know. And if you're interested at all in this kind of stuff, then I recommend that you check out, again, the Hidden History of the Holidays, Hannah Harvey. If you have trouble remembering it, just remember that it is a ton of H's. <laughs> Maybe that will help. But then there's also, of course, reading that you can do, research that you can do. Like I said, I was just on the National Park Service website talking about the creation of Thanksgiving as a holiday. And so if you think about it, 1863, that is um, a very long time from when we think of the quote-unquote traditional first Thanksgiving, right? The um, That it was in 1621 when the pilgrims and the Wampanoag, Wamp mm, I can say this, Wamp, a Noag, I was trying to put too many syllables in there, Wampanoag Indians held their feast in Plymouth County. Um, but by 1777, all 13 of the colonies were holding Thanksgiving celebrations. Again, this is from the National Park Service website. Um, in 1789, President Washington declared November 26th a national day of Thanksgiving, but that was just that day. It wasn't an annual thing. Um, in 1815, President James Madison declares a national day of prayer and thanksgiving. So again, just a day. It wasn't uh, until Sarah jo Josepha Hale and President Lincoln that it became a holiday, an annual holiday. And so um, Lincoln issued a proclamation calling for the last Thursday of November to be set aside as a day of thanksgiving and praise. Uh, 1920, the first Thanksgiving parade is held in Philadelphia. In 1922, the National Football League plays its first games on Thanksgiving Day. 1922! I... That's... Yeah, that, that's amazing. Um, in 1924, the first Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is held in New York. Oh my gosh! That means in uh, three years, it'll be the 100th anniversary of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Awesome! <laughs> in 1934... Uh... The National Football League holds its first game on Thanksgiving Day. 
1922, the National Football League plays its first games on Thanksgiving Day. 1934, the National Football League holds its first game on Thanksgiving Day. Someone needs to explain to me the difference in that. Um, 1941, after altering the date of Thanksgiving, President Franklin Roosevelt reestablishes the fourth Thursday of November as Thanksgiving Day. Uh, 1947, President Harry Truman pardons a turkey that is marked for Thanksgiving dinner at the White House. I'm guessing that means that President Truman started the whole process of pardoning the turkey, which is, then makes sense as to why it's the picture of President Truman pardoning a turkey. Uh, yeah. Good job, Turkey. I mean, you're a very, very, very long gone. I don't think anybody in this picture now is probably still alive. Although, again, I should not assume uh, about when people die. That's just what I should do. Um, this is a horrible segue. And I don't mean to make light of this at all, but I just did mention people dying. And I found out this weekend that author Megan Masterson just died. She's been battling cancer for quite some time, and she did lose that battle in the last couple of days. I'm not sure of the exact date, but uh, her mother posted on her social media accounts that Megan had died. And I, I never met Megan. I didn't know Megan. I interviewed her for this podcast, and if you follow me, you know that I have a kind of a, a special place in my heart for all of the authors that I interview, you know, hopefully not in a creepy way. I'm not out there stalking them or anything. But, you know, once I interview someone, it's like, hey, I, I have that connection with that person. And so that that news hit me a lot harder than I expected it to when I saw that on my on my social media accounts, because the last I'd heard, she was still out walking her dog and she had crossed a couple things off her bucket list. Um, and again, I apologize for that that segue. I just remembered that I did want to to touch on this, and it it's it's actually a really good reminder this week as we are celebrating Thanksgiving in whatever ways you do that to to give thanks for the people in your life who have touched you in any way, shape, or form. You know, in the in the slightest of ways. And I give thanks for Megan and her life and her books. Those books will, of course, outlive her, and that's a wonderful legacy. But, um, you know, life is short, and we never know what's going to happen today, tomorrow, the next day. Just a reminder that we need to, as we're giving thanks, as we're stuffing ourselves with whatever feast we're having on Thursday, we need to take a moment to really appreciate the people in our lives, um, no matter how small the role they might play in our lives. Uh, let's go ahead and take um, uh, the first break of the podcast so we can transition back into a bit of a more lighthearted, lighthearted episode. But I just did want to mention Megan, again, uh, Megan Masterson, and uh, may she rest in peace and may her family be held in light and love as they both mourn her and celebrate her life among us. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. It is the Thanksgiving episode. I got a little geeky about the history of Thanksgiving. And I don't I don't think that the holiday as we celebrate it now is necessarily I mean yes, of course it has the ties to that supposed third first Thanksgiving, but I hope that we have made it into its own its own occasion, a time of giving thanks, a time to spend with family. I, I really, I don't like the word friendsgiving, but I understand the concept of kind of your chosen family, right? Getting together with friends. Not not, not every Thanksgiving is good. And not everyone wants to spend Thanksgiving with their families. Um, I'm sure that families 
No, I'm not. I'm, I know families can be extraordinarily problematic, and once you put people of differing political views or religious views or any other kinds of views around a table, things are going to get heated. But hopefully, you can make it a day that works for you. If that means just hanging out and watching football with your favorite person and eating, I don't know, lasagna, go for it. If that means the whole dinner with turkey and stuffing and, and, and all the all the side dishes, go for that. I have learned so much about different Thanksgiving traditions since I got married because I am white, my husband is black, and we have extremely different Thanksgiving traditions. <laughs> I did not realize, you know, I just figured everybody ate the same thing that I ate growing up. And, well, actually, as I grew older, I realized that not even my white friends have the same exact ingredients on their Thanksgiving table, but um, my husband's family... It is a feast. It is a feast. <laughs> I mean, it's not just turkey. It's turkey. It's ham. It's a number of other kinds of meat. And I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I could spend the next 10 to 20 minutes just talking about all of the different food. But um, can I just take a moment to say sweet potato pie? <sighs> My father-in-law made it for the first Thanksgiving. I met, I met him uh, for the first time on Thanksgiving and he made me a sweet potato pie, and it was, ugh, yeah, I'm in love. Anyway, we're here to talk about books, right? Let's talk about books. Thanksgiving as a holiday, problematic. Also doesn't get the love it deserves. Maybe it shouldn't get the love it deserves. Maybe it doesn't deserve love because it is a problematic holiday, but all holidays have their own set of problems. I'm talking about the fact that we go from Halloween, October 31st, midnight on Halloween, poof, it's Christmas. <laughs> Um, and you know it, it's just uh, I, I love Christmas and I love Christmas music and I love Christmas movies but uh, let's 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 leave a little room in there for for some Thanksgiving right um, it's kind of the same thing there aren't as many books that you can find that are set on Thanksgiving um, I actually found more this year than I, I had in the past I don't know what I was doing to search differently let me take a moment here to say, hey, hit me up in the comments. Tell me if you have any favorite books that take place at Thanksgiving. The first book that I want to talk about is called Still Life. It's by Louise Penny. It is the first book in her series featuring Armand Gamache. And what I like about this one is that it does take place around the Thanksgiving holiday, but it's the Canadian Thanksgiving holiday. So that is the second Monday of October. We celebrate it in November here in the States. Uh, Canadians celebrate it in October, which actually, if you are thinking about traditional harvest fests, makes a little more sense. October is still a little late-ish in terms of harvest, but not as late as the end of November. At any rate, so this is the first in her series of books featuring this particular detective. It is a murder mystery. It is, um, she has been on my list, uh, my TBR list forever because authors that I talk to keep bringing up Louise Penny as one of their go-to authors. So finally, 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 I got it on, audio, um, on audiobook and was able to listen to it I think I was still in Montana when I listened to it, but um, there's a murder mystery, De uh, detective inspector, is he a detective inspector? Different titles in Canada. No, it's it's chief inspector. So chief inspector uh, Gamache is, is tasked with going to this small town in Quebec. And actually, let me just go ahead and read you the description because it's been a while since I listened to it. Uh, but the discovery of a dead body in the woods on Thanksgiving weekend brings Chief Inspector Armand Gamache and his colleagues from the Surette de Quebec to a small village in the eastern townships. Gamache cannot understand why anyone would want to deliberately kill well-loved artist Jane Neal, especially any of the residents of Three Pines, a place so free from crime it doesn't even have its own police force. But Gamache knows that evil is lurking somewhere behind the white picket fences and that if he watches closely enough, Three Pines will start to give up its dark secrets. That's the description. Also, it does take place over Thanksgiving weekend, so it's perfect for this episode. But also, 
it is about chosen family. So there is a group of friends in this book who spend every Thanksgiving together. They have created their own chosen family. And there's some, uh, there's a lot about relationships in this book. So it's um, another reason that it's really appropriate for Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving can be a lot about relationships. It can be a lot about our chosen family and who we choose to spend Thanksgiving with, whether that is biological or chosen family. And I'm really glad that I finally got around to listening to this book. I am looking forward to hopefully finding time for more Louise Penny novels and mysteries because I am very, very behind in all of my reading. But uh, Louise Penny has been on my list for a while. So Still Life by Louise Penny. Canadian Thanksgiving. Definitely check it out if you haven't done so already. Let's go ahead and take the second break of the podcast. When I come back, I'll be talking about two books that have the were the phrase turkey trot in the title. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the tryptophan-inspired third segment. As I mentioned before the break, I am talking about two books that have Turkey Trot in the title. The first is uh, Turkey Trot Murder by Leslie Meyer. Now, if you have been listening to the podcast for any length of time and you've listened to any of my holiday episodes, you know that I'm always looking for books that in some way incorporate whatever holiday I am about to celebrate. And the other day I thought, you know, maybe I should just start writing my own cozy mysteries, all of them uh, centered around a holiday. And, you know, that could just, what do they say? If you you don't, you can't find the book that you want to read, then you need to write it. And I don't see myself as an author per se, but I thought maybe, maybe that's my solution. Well, I think Leslie Meyer is actually my solution because she has Christmas cozy. She has Thanksgiving cozy. She has, it, it seems as though there is an unending stream of holiday cozy mysteries. I'm not sure that the main character, Lucy, should celebrate any holidays going forward because someone apparently always dies. Uh, At any rate, this one is called Turkey Trot Murder. I got it on audiobook, and here is the description. Besides the annual Turkey Trot 5K on Thanksgiving Day, Lucy expects the approaching holiday to be a relatively uneventful one until she finds beautiful Allison Franklin dead and frozen in Blueberry Pond. No one knows much about Allison, except that she was the daughter of the wealthy investor Ed Franklin and struggled quietly with drug addiction. Police blame her death on an accidental overdose, but Lucy can't understand what terrible forces could have led the privileged woman to her watery ruin. Allison's funeral service is just as puzzling. Many believe Ed's young and very pregnant new wife, Mireille, divided the family, leaving Allison to wither on the vine. Did Mireille truly adore her stepchild as Ed claims, or did she pit father against daughter for personal gain? As a state of unrest descends on Tinker's Cove, Lucy is thrown into a full-scale investigation. Now in a race against time, Lucy must beat the killer to the finish line, or she can forget about stuffing and cranberry sauce. 
So there is the description of Turkey Trot murder. There is another um, plot line going on in this story as well. And that is, first off, um, Allison Franklin's father, Ed, is um, very bigoted. And there is a a man uh, whose name is... Ray, I think Ray Rodriguez, who is moving into Tinker's Cove to open a restaurant, and apparently he's a very well-known chef in California and has written cookbooks, etc., but now he wants to move to Tinker's Cove and open a restaurant, and there is just this whole backlash against uh, keeping Mexico Mexicans in Mexico and building a wall and just a lot of stuff. This was um, published in 2017, and so... A lot of it is still going on, so that was hard, and a lot of it, uh, it, it, maybe it's harder to read because of a lot of the things that have been going on in the news and in the world these last four years, but that there were times when that felt really difficult. Um, Sometimes a little tone deaf, sometimes a little, um, um, I just lost the phrase that I had in my head, but um, it's it's also still very much a lot of the things that the people are saying against um, Ray in his, I think his name is Ray. I apologize that it just went out of my head. It does start with an R and the last name is Rodriguez, but uh, you know, his family has lived in California for generations. They're not from Mexico. They're um, Spanish, et cetera, et cetera. There's just, there's a group called America for Americans. And so some of it was really hard to read, honestly. And well, um, like I said, some of it was a little heavy handed. That's the phrase I was looking for earlier. And some of it was a little tone deaf. I think I am also looking at it through the last four years and everything that has happened. And maybe had I read it four years ago, it would have felt like it was neither of those things. I'm not sure. But if you're looking for a completely lighthearted, cozy mystery, this is not it. <laughs> there are lighthearted elements within it. There is a dog. Um, but it, in addition to the the deaths in the book, there is also this underlying um, bigotry and racism and hatred going on throughout the book. So it, it's, it's definitely not lighthearted. What is lighthearted is the second book with Turkey Trot in the title, and that is Turkey Trot Plot, first of all. Yay for a good rhyme. But this is a Nancy Drew clue book. Did you know that there are Nancy Drew um, books for young readers, chapter books? I did not know this. I do not have children of this age, I guess. I've, I've not I've not encountered this before, but they are adorable. And this one also takes place during the turkey trot. There is a mystery surrounding the turkey trot on Thanksgiving. There is a new chocolate store in town, and that chocolate store has provided a giant chocolate turkey for the winners of the turkey trot. I think the costume contest winners of the turkey trot. Well, that giant chocolate turkey goes missing. And so Nancy and George and Bess have to solve the crime. They are maybe nine, didn't say in the book. Um, And this is number 12 in this series. So there must, there appears to be quite a few Nancy Drew clue books. And Maybe you're thinking, huh, isn't the author of those books, shouldn't the author of those books uh, be, oh gosh, this is such a death-themed episode today, but wouldn't you think Carolyn Keene would be dead by now? Well, Carolyn Keene never actually existed, so it works out okay that somebody else is writing the Nancy Drew Clue books. Looking on Simon & Schuster's website, it looks like the most recent is number 17 with a new one. Uh, No, number 17 is coming out in March of 2022, and that one is Recipe Ruckus. So yeah, we've got um, World Record Mystery, um, uh, a Halloween one, Boo Crew. Dang it, wish I'd known that before Halloween. Could have included that, but... Uh, Yeah, these are cute. The illustrator is Peter Francis, and the illustrations are adorable. And I like that it is still Nancy and Bess and George doing their thing and solving mysteries, although maybe a little less dramatic than what they are going to solve in their, uh, their teen years. I was not a huge Nancy Drew fan growing up. 
maybe I was too much of a wimp. We all know that I can't do <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, well, I know Nancy Drew is not, is not scary. I know that, but I was a wimpy kid and we all know that as well. But I also was a much bigger fan of Trixie Belden. And apparently my small self just thought that I couldn't, I couldn't love both of them. So I was more of a Trixie Belden fan than a Nancy Drew fan. And that is my confession to you all. In fact, if somebody wants to do, uh, you know, a Trixie Belden clue book kind of series, I would be perfectly happy to read that. And if it exists, just let me know in the comments or on social media because I will read the heck out of those. At any rate, I also read another book in the Rebecca Mouse and RJ series. I talked about the Halloween book on the Halloween episode. And this one is Thanksgiving Turkey Trouble. Uh, no turkey trot in this one, although uh, I definitely like the Halloween episode better. But this one was still cute enough. Rebecca Mouse and RJ are together on Thanksgiving. And while their moms are uh, cooking dinner Thanksgiving dinner they they go with their dads to put together Thanksgiving baskets for um the areas uh, a group that uh, that puts obviously that puts together food baskets for those in need in the area well they get it into their heads that the the turkeys on this farm where they are are uh, the actual turkeys that are going to be butchered for the Thanksgiving baskets that are going to people and uh, so their intentions are okay they they're, they're kind of good they they just they set the turkeys free it turns out the turkeys are pets and they are there uh, it's like part of a kind of a petting zoo every year for the kids to to look at and, and interact with which part, part of my brain kept saying ah don't play with turkeys and then go home and eat the turkeys I don't know that it seemed a little odd but instead of asking anyone if those are the turkeys that were going to be used they assumed there's a lot of assuming in this book and I realized that you need a certain level of assumption in order to make things work in a story like that um I just liked the Halloween um book better but it's still very cute and again something to read for the Thanksgiving holiday Let's take the final break of the podcast, and when we come back, not going to be talking about a Thanksgiving book, but uh, a, still a holiday-themed book, and I'm very excited to share it with you, so stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my non-Thanksgiving book choice for this episode. This uh, book actually features the holiday of Diwali, which is still in November, so it's still appropriate. Uh, the book is called Holly Jolly Diwali, and it is by Sonia Lolly. Okay, so first of all, I love that the whole thing rhymes. So, uh, Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Lolly. That just makes me smile. Uh, but I also loved that it is a holiday that I don't know much about. I first learned about it when um, Pyle Doty was on the Doshi, excuse me, was on the podcast talking about Rhea and the Blood of the Nectar. If you haven't listened to that episode, you should definitely listen to it. It's a, a young adult fantasy book, and it's so good. But the characters in that book are celebrating Diwali. The book takes place around Diwali, and so I. I knew I'd heard it, heard of it, and I, uh, I knew tiny bits about it, but I hadn't learned much. And one thing that I really like about this book is that the main character celebrates Diwali with her Indian family, but she goes to India during Diwali, and she keeps so she starts asking people of different backgrounds, "Why do we celebrate Diwali?" And so she gets all these answers, and then I, as the reader, got to get the answers to those as well. And so I got to learn something, but it fit in with the theme and the the feeling of the story. But um, this year, 
Diwali was on November 4th, and it's actually, it, it's one of those holidays that changes every year. So um, it says it is determined by the India calendar and does change every year, ranging from October to November. It is observed on the 15th day of the 8th month. That's the month of Kartik, K-A-R-T-I-K. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, so the 15th day of the 8th month in India's calendar. Uh, the day is uh, a new moon day uh, when the moon opposes the sun's light by up to 12 degrees. And so, yeah, very specific, but there's a lot of references to light in terms of Diwali. Um, the goddess Lakshmi, the god of wealth, is mainly worshipped during Diwali Puja for happiness, prosperity, and fame. For Diwali 2021 in Delhi, the Lakshmi Puja Muharat best time to worship Lakshmi, Lakshmi is the hour is the one hour 55 minutes from 609 p.m to 804 p.m on November 4th so I mean very specific that is really very cool uh, celebrations of Diwali uh, it says Diwali 2021 so I'm not sure if this is different for other years but last for five days and uh, we do have some Indian families in our neighborhood and I remembered I was my um my husband and I were hanging out one night and we started hearing um, fireworks and, and laughter and, and, you know, kind of yelling and good, happy noises in the neighborhood. And um, I said, oh, yeah, it's Diwali. And I, that's, I mean, I felt happy that I at least knew what was going on. But when my husband said, what's Diwali? I said, I am not sure. <laughs> and so we, we looked it up. But then on TikTok, I saw this book, Holly Jolly Diwali, and it looked great and the review was good. And so I got it and I loved it. I have not been reading a lot of romantic comedies lately and I miss them. I think they're definitely in my top, my one of my top genres for book choices, but um, so much fun. Let me give you the description. 29-year-old Nikki Rondava has always made practical decisions. Despite her love for music and art, she became an analyst for the stability. She's always stuck close to home in case her family needed her, and she's always dated guys that seem good on paper, rather than the ones who give her butterflies. When she's laid off, Nikki realizes that practical hasn't exactly paid off for her, so for the first time ever, she throws caution to the wind and books a last-minute flight for her friend Dia. Is it, did they pronounce it Dia? Yeah, Dia's wedding. Nikki arrives in India just in time to celebrate Diwali, Festival of Lights, where she meets London musician Samir Mukherjee. Maybe it's the splendor of Mumbai or the magic of the holiday season, but Nikki is immediately drawn to Sam. At the wedding, the champagne flows and their flirtatious banter makes it clear that the attraction is mutual. When Nikki and Sam join Dia, her husband, and their friends on a group honeymoon, their connection grows deeper. Free-spirited Sam helps Nikki get in touch with her passionate and creative side and with her Indian roots. And she, when she gets a new job offer back home, Nikki must decide what she wants out of the next chapter of her life. To cling to the straight and narrow like always, or to take a leap of faith and live the kind of bold life the old Nikki would never have dreamed of. So that is Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Lolly. It is, it is so cute. It is so sweet. It is just... Perfect. If you're looking for a, a good, lighthearted read, I realize Diwali has passed, but you don't have to read it uh, at the same time. And and hey, there's um, Christmas. She go when she gets home from India. Uh, then there's a there's a brief that her she and her family celebrate Christmas. So you can still read it, and you're still timely <laughs> if you're looking for a really good, really cute, very sweet romantic comedy to read right now because I think we could all use something lighthearted and sweet and fun. So those are my Thanksgiving with a, sm a soupçon of um, Diwali choices for this episode. I hope that your week ahead goes really well, that you have the Thanksgiving that you that, that, that brings you joy and makes you feel grateful and not a Thanksgiving that makes you wish you didn't have to spend the next that four hours or however many hours with the people that you had to spend it with because that's never fun uh hopefully you'll get a four-day weekend depending on what your job entitles and if you do even if you don't get a four-day weekend you know I'm still going to wish you plenty 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 of time to get yourself lost in a good book happy Thanksgiving Nope, fooled you. Not done yet. <laughs> I 
thought I was done, but I forgot to tease the next episode in which I will be speaking with Catherine Dean Mazaroff about her debut novel, Summer Club. It's not quite a cozy mystery, but there is a very, um, a very important dog that play, you know, the, the dog does play a very important role in the book. So join me for my conversation with Catherine Dean Mazaroff. Again, it's her debut novel and it is called Summer Club. Now, happy Thanksgiving. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.